Hello, everyone. Welcome to the TC Lifestyle Fit Podcast. I'm your host, Tim TC Collins. We have an incredible guest with us today, Coach Chad Sammy Samuelson, one of the most talented men in America. He's gifted. I have a significant amount of love, uh, reverence, and uh, overall respect for Coach Sammy. He's a, a father. He's a husband. One of the most uh, well uh, recognized coaches that I've ever had opportunity uh, to contact with. And he uh, also works for a, a company. You have a leadership position with uh, Genetech, correct? There's a bio yeah. uh, technology um, uh, firm that specializes in developing medical uh, equipment for people with life threatening illnesses. Can you tell us about your role with that company? TC, I'd be happy to, and just uh, thank you so much for having me on the podcast today. It was incredible. I, 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 was, I was telling you, walked in here nervous and uh, a little bit, never been on a podcast before, but oh, just love spending time with you and the energy that you bring into the community. It's, a, it's incredible. I appreciate it, Coach. Yeah, my, uh, my role at Genentech, so I'm a healthcare market director uh, for Genentech. We're a biotech company. Uh, we are the first ever biotech company, so when, when science first started and looking at different ways to treat illnesses and diseases, Genentech paved the way, mm -hmm. and I'm in my 20th year with them now. Wow, 20 years. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a long time. It is a long time. It's gone fast. I've been an opportunity to have a, a number of roles, a number of jobs, mm -hmm. and the company itself is so dynamic that we have over 30 medicines uh, mm -hmm. that we bring to patients and to, to the community. Uh, I've been in a variety of different positions with the company. Mm -hmm. uh, over my tenure in 20 years, I've served 12 different roles. Uh, wow. And the last decade, I've just been in entirely leadership. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's a it, it's phenomenal opportunity to combine my passion for science, for health, mm -hmm. and then place that into uh, uh, the business aspect of uh, leading people, leading teams, mm -hmm. and making sure our medicines reach the, the patients who need them. Mm -hmm. How did you earn your way into leadership? It, it was a long road. I mean, I had to make a lot of sacrifices. Mm -hmm. um, I started out in industry. Yeah, I, I mean, I started out in the industry. I was, um, my background is in biology and chemistry. So from an education perspective, I was always kind of on that path towards medicine. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I found my way into the industry, almost by, by luck, by chance, mm -hmm. um, I was like anyone else. I was a sales professional mm -hmm. trying to do my craft, very competitive. Mm -hmm. And I wanted more. I wanted to have a bigger impact on people. Mm -hmm. And so the sacrifice for me was, leaving what I knew here in the Omaha community and the, the friends I'd built. Uh, and my, my wife and I moved to San Francisco. And so we spent the better part of a decade on the West Coast. Uh, for me, learning the organization, learning, the, learning roles, uh, so I could earn my way into a leadership position. Mm -hmm. And the, wow. the best advice I had had at that time was from uh, my national sales director um, way back in 2006, mm -hmm. who I had talked to about my aspirations for leadership. And he shared with me, Sammy, uh, you can go and be a leader from this position you're in and, and be patient and make it here in Omaha and eventually earn that or take the opportunity, make the sacrifice, go learn the organization. And, and then when you, when you earn that opportunity, you can be a great leader, not just a good leader. You can be a great leader. And, and that was what really interests me to pursue that. Mm, to be great instead of just being good requires an individual to drop something lesser for something better and going through that process isn't always uh, simple because it requires you to identify with a different version of, of, of yourself and it, 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 it isn't always uh, an easy path initially but for someone who is hunting uh, a new opportunity in leadership or self-development uh, what is your advice for that individual who is, is who is attempting to take their skills, knowledge, leadership to a higher level in life? That's a that's, a, that's an adept question. Um, I, I think like any goal that you have, you have to approach it from a standpoint of it's it's years, not days, mm -hmm. and to, to be uh, to earn an opportunity, and specifically in leading teams, leading people. That's about service. That's about giving back. That's about being willing to sacrifice maybe your immediate need or immediate responsibility mm -hmm. for something for a bigger cause. Mm -hmm. And the bigger cause being the individuals that you're going to lead. Mm -hmm. 
you know, willing to put yourself out there and, and do the things that you're asking them to do, um, really that service and that, that servant leadership. For, for me, when I talk about um, it, it's years, not days, the idea of how do you, how do you have a long-term goal and pursue that long-term goal and you know that you're gonna have these immediate sacrifices on a daily basis that you won't be able to do this, the small things that others are doing because your vision is bigger and the, the earn that opportunity is gonna take more time but mm -hmm. be consistent, uh, mm -hmm. stay that course. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that I take away from like mm -hmm. my pursuit of being in a role of, of leading people and having a greater impact. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. One of my clients was, was a former uh, CEO of a large corporation and he tells me all the time, the leadership is all about pointing the thumb, not pointing the finger. So when things go well, as a leader, it's your job to give away the credit to other people. And when things aren't necessarily going your way, it's your job to take ownership and responsibility. Can you tell us about a time, you know, as a leader in your organization or even being a leader at your house, being a leader at home where you had to point the thumb instead of pointing the finger to help everyone in your care succeed? Yeah, this feels like a, that would be an excellent job interview question mm -hmm. too. Uh, I, I think so often it's that the idea of how do I, how do I take responsibility and accountability for something that, that happened mm -hmm. uh, and whether I'm directly responsible for it or not. In a leadership role, you, you have to point the thumb at yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, the CEO that, that offered that, that advice or that perspective, that, that's a person I would follow because um, they're mm -hmm. willing to do that. You know, for me, the business world is all about how do we how do we hit a number how do we how, how do we pave a course for uh, uh, eventually a forecast revenue mm -hmm. but but it's bigger than that it's also about how do people experience that mm -hmm. and so in our in our um, what we call ecosystem or our, our larger team you know we ask for people for feedback about how are you how are you experiencing the environment the culture that we have built here mm -hmm. in our company mm -hmm. And, and locally, we received feedback that was, it, it was not positive. Mm -hmm. it, it was a lot of um, people didn't feel valued or they didn't mm -hmm. feel that they were positioned for success or mm -hmm. maybe not heard. Mm -hmm. And I think very often it's, you can deflect and say, that's mm -hmm. not me, mm -hmm. you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's you. Mm -hmm. And so we had that experience um, two years ago, leading during the pandemic, probably one of the most challenging times I've experienced as a leader. In history, for sure. yeah. yeah, in, in our history, no doubt about it, right? right. Uh, and, and people, we are all showing up different. I mean, no one knew the way out of this or, or what, what next day would bring, so you're just trying to do your best, uh, and, and the best wasn't good enough, and I think that was an example where we received you know, a larger body of feedback as a, a leadership team, and uh, I took it upon myself to say, look, we can't deflect that. We have, to, we have to own that feedback, and then the question winds up, what do we do with it? And that was an opportunity uh, during the Breakfast pandemic. The champion, they say, well, I've heard on multiple occasions that feedback is the breakfast of champions. That's how you get better. Yeah, a lot of people just say it's a gift, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's the breakfast of champions, it's the gift that you receive. Mm -hmm. And then the question winds up being, what, what do you do with it? Mm -hmm. You know, how do you share with people that you're hearing them mm -hmm. and that you're willing to take that feedback and, mm -hmm. and take action? Mm -hmm. Taking action on the knowledge you have been given. Yeah. Wow, that's so good. And, we have conversations a, a lot about winning at the, the office, or winning in business. However, I haven't heard too many conversations about winning at home. You've been married to an amazing wife, Coach Katie, <laughs> and I've been you know, married to my beautiful wife, Taisha, very important to me. You have a son and daughter, I have a son and daughter. How important is it as a man, as a father, to win at home first. Yeah, I, uh, it, it's 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 of the utmost importance, and I think when you, when you say winning at home, I, I think about mm -hmm. uh, in that same vein of how do I be a, a present at home? Mm -hmm. How do I how do I give back at home so mm -hmm. the my household feels me that mm -hmm. that they experience what I bring to support us as a family, mm -hmm. and and often like that's a struggle. Uh, it's a struggle of balancing your professional life and your mm -hmm. pursuits as an individual. Uh, your own well-being, and then like, how do you show up as a husband or a father? And 
And uh, I've often said, I think, uh, I think I'm, a, I'm a great dad. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a great uh, worker at Genentech, and I'm, I'm a good husband. Like, I, I need to be better by that. And um, one, You're I think- an amazing husband. I know there's always room for improvement with, with all of us. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think it's, uh, for me, it, it, I appreciate that. Um, how, can I, how can I identify where I'm, I, I'm, I'm strongest? and really mm -hmm. invest that time and energy to give. Mm -hmm. And then how do I support my spouse in being as, as mm -hmm. successful as she can be? You know, to be, uh, and I do, I'm married to a wonderful, strong woman who has a lot of passions in life and gives back to others. How do I support her to better, to better do that? And, I, and for me, you know, giving back to my kids, giving back to my wife, uh, and then taking care of myself, because I think you have to take care of yourself to, to be able to do all those things. And it's kind of fitting that we're sitting in a gym talking about this. Um, but I think that that helps me win at home. Mm -hmm. Those things wow. help me win at home. That's awesome. In my leadership journey, I'm always studying different principles and concepts. And the, and the number one, uh, well, one of the number one philosophies I, I've a, adopted uh, recently is that you can't put old wine in a new wineskin, which means your old behaviors that didn't serve you yesterday aren't going to prepare you for tomorrow's success. What's your philosophy on getting rid of old programming, which we're all products of experiences uh, growing up during the formative years of our life that has uh, uh, an impact on our overall psychology and cognitive development. Uh, how do we rewire our thinking to help us move forward and achieve something that's going to serve our desires and make us better, whether it's being a husband, uh, at work, basketball coach, which we'll get into that here shortly because you have some uh, it's lots of experience in the, the basketball profession. Uh, but how do we do that in general? Yeah, I, I think that's. Or how do you? It's a, it's now, what's a, your personal journey with letting go of? something that doesn't serve you to catch something better. Yeah, it, it, I, this is a space I've done a lot of reading on. You know, it's the idea of, you know, what is the obstacle that you're trying to overcome mm -hmm. and, and how do you get there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what is the feedback or coaching received and the mm -hmm. people that inspire you in life that, that help propel you towards mm -hmm. that goal? People, people, surrounding yourself with people, that's a big, big deal. It, it's, it's significant and, you know, for me I find, um, I also like, I, I think even the experience that you had that weren't positive, the, mm -hmm. the, the things that shaped you in a way that you mm -hmm. realize I'm not going to be like that, or I'm not mm -hmm. going to show up in that way. Mm -hmm. I, I think all of those experiences make us who we are. And mm -hmm. so you can, for me personally, I, I, I borrow from the best, mm -hmm. you know, what do mm -hmm. the best do? How do mm -hmm. the best inspire themselves? Mm -hmm. What do people call upon to be more successful or mm -hmm. to achieve the goals that mm -hmm. are in front of them? And then I also think about my own experiences. What, what was it that I felt was mm -hmm. um, you know, challenging me the most or holding me back or mm -hmm. that I didn't feel was providing me the best path forward? And I, and I released that. I, you learn from it, but you don't take it with you. Mm -hmm. um, there's a really well, good- um, You learn from it, but you, don't take, you can't take it with you into the future because it will ultimately hold you back from catching something that's, that's going to uh, shape your ability. Yeah, I mean, what, what matters is like the present, the now, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the, the anxiety I felt 15 minutes ago getting out of my Jeep to walk in this building to have mm -hmm. this podcast, like, oh, even you know, that's not serving me, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I can't bring that with me because like, what is that going to do? It's just going to hold me back. Mm -hmm. And so I need to be present in the now and, mm -hmm. and, and really focus on like this, this energy. And, and that's something I try to take into how I show up, um, how I achieve goals is, mm -hmm. I think you learn from all the experiences that shape you, from the people who are impacting your lives mm -hmm. or your life, but mm -hmm. you know, then it's about what, what do I need to be most successful? Mm -hmm. What's gonna help me and how I show up? Mm -hmm. you know, the, my, my needs are different than you know, maybe your needs, mm -hmm. but then call upon that and put that in action. Mm -hmm. And then, and that's a huge part of it. Like, then you gotta do the work, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. you, the knowledge is there, but you gotta do the work. Everybody wants to be a beast, but they don't want to always do the work that's required to become it stronger and better. Uh, instead of hunting the discomfort that's going to 
shape you into this juggernaut of a person, we tend to run from it. Uh, one of my best friends and I that uh, we have a lot of conversations about, you know, leadership, philosophy, fitness, health, mm-hmm. um, being a better dad. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you'll, you'll appreciate this, but uh, when it comes to working out, like there's certain days your workout is harder mm-hmm. than others. And mm-hmm. there's certain days you feel like being in the gym. Mm-hmm. If you have this equipment, you want to be in the gym more often. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the question is, like, did you touch the bar? Mm-hmm. And that's the phrase we always ask ourselves, like, did you touch the bar? And mm-hmm. if, if you went to that day and you grabbed the barbell and you did something, you did something. You were moving. Did you touch the bar today? Mm-hmm. So I, that's that's something I, I I ask myself all the time. Like mm-hmm. the idea of did you touch the bar? Mm-hmm. So can you tell us about your personal journey with touching the bar? What does your fitness routine look like? And what are maybe some tips that you could give some of our viewers who haven't necessarily got got started yet? Well, I think all the tips should come from this side of the room, not this side of the room. Um, you have a but, plethora of knowledge in this area. I, I think for me, it's, um, you know, so I, I, I wasn't really into fitness. Like, I've always been in sports, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I love sports and I love the, the feel of competition. Mm-hmm. And uh, I did not have my priorities right in life when my wife and I lived in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Then our kids were born. We, you know, mm-hmm. we have a 13 year old twins now. Mm-hmm. So they're born in the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. And I was, uh, I was drinking Mountain Dews mm-hmm. and, you know, staying up late, mm-hmm. uh, not getting up, and I was still playing hoops. And uh, in my mind, I saw myself as that, you know, that 21-year-old hooper in college who could fly. Mm-hmm. And I think my body was starting to tell me I wasn't. Mm-hmm. Um, when we moved to Vegas, uh, that's where, really where I started getting more into the routine of fitness. And um, I thought th- there's a good, really good book about, uh, by Jesse Itzler called uh, Living with a Navy Seal. It's mm-hmm. David Goggins. I know, mm-hmm. I know, I love you, David Goggins. I know you love Goggins. Yeah, he's amazing. But uh, the idea of doing a pull-up you know, just do one, right? And then one leads to two, two leads to four, next thing you do in 10. And, uh, marginal I, gains, the those, aggregation of marginal gains. The Bill aggregation of mar- marginal gains. And I was telling that story to my dad. My, my dad um, is somebody who's a great role model for me. Mm-hmm. You know, he had, a, he had a really severe injury where he nearly lost his arm when I was growing up. And I never really thought about it much, but he was, he was in the backyard after he was rehabbing because mm-hmm. rehab wasn't one, uh, now, back then wasn't what it is now. Mm-hmm. And he was doing pull-ups in the backyard. And so he told me a story about, you know, hey, I, I had to learn how to do one pull-up. And then one le- led to two, two led to four. And literally my own dad was kind of telling me his journey, kind of similar to what, you know, the, the Goggins story. And I used that as inspiration. And then I started getting into fitness. So for me now, like um, the idea of years, not days, you, you get, can't just show up and be like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to power clean 225. Like, mm-hmm. You got to work your way there. Mm-hmm. So I would say over the last you know, 13 years, you know, I'm a morning routine guy. Mm-hmm. I get, I get up, get it in. My routine, goal. You, would, you, would you say a routine is important? Routine is huge. Mm-hmm. How important is having a r- r- routine for those who haven't got started yet? Um, routine how is. How do you start a routine? Routine is everything. So number one, I think you have to prioritize you. Mm-hmm. You have to find a way that if this goal is important to you, mm-hmm. then you make that time. Mm-hmm. And there's people who do the evening workout. I'm not that guy. Mm-hmm. I, I prioritize my time in the morning for me. Mm-hmm. And that's my self-care. That's, my, that's where I put my workout in. Because mm-hmm. everything else in the day that happens after that sometimes is out of my control. Mm-hmm. And so I, I would lose the time. Mm-hmm. And so I think number one routine is about prioritizing the time mm-hmm. for yourself. And whatever it is, if it's start small, mm-hmm. 10 minutes, mm-hmm. um, 30 minutes, an hour, mm-hmm. it doesn't take much. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think number one, routine, make the time. Mm-hmm. Two is hold yourself accountable. I write it down. I was, you know, there's a whiteboard. Yes. There's a whiteboard in this room somewhere. Mm-hmm. It, was, uh, it was behind me a minute ago. Mm-hmm. And so you write it down. Mm-hmm. And I think that what are you going to do? Why are you here? What's your goal today? What are you going to accomplish? Mm-hmm. You know, keep track. Mm-hmm. Write those things down. Mm-hmm. And then the last thing that I, I incorporate is I have an accountability partner. You know, so I have a friend who I, every day I take a picture of the whiteboard. What did I do? How did I achieve? And I send it to him. Mm-hmm. You know, when we can, we work out together. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I do think there's strength in community. Mm-hmm. You know, other people who are like-minded, who have mm-hmm. the similar goals as you do, mm-hmm. they'll push you to be better. There are some individuals who are really good at meeting other people's expectations, but they have a hard time meeting their own inner expectations. So for those types of uh, people, it, it would be most uh, efficient or ideal uh, to, to work 
with a partner because you have someone who's going to hold you accountable. You have some motivation on the outside and people who, who genuinely care and want to see you succeed. So that's a, that's a great place to start for someone who, who is getting on track with bettering their health and their fitness. What would you say to someone who has very little knowledge with nutrition? Yeah. How important is eating healthy to achieving results mentally and physically? Yeah. Um, let me answer that, TC. I'm, I'm going to go back to something. You were, you were just talking about someone who was getting started yeah. before you asked a question about nutrition, and yeah. it, it sparked a thought with me. Mm. Um, so someone who's getting started who doesn't know what to do when they walk into like a, this beautiful facility that we're yes. sitting in yes. that has all this, this amazing equipment, I think it's imperative like you you ask questions, you get help, mm -hmm. that you put yourself out there, whether you join a small class or get a, a trainer. Mm -hmm. uh, now YouTube, you could you could research it yourself. Application, yeah. For me, I'm uh, it, anxiety gets in my way of jumping in the group, like, mm -hmm. and so uh, I have to force myself to be a part of that. And I, I've been a, a part of like you know several CrossFit gyms here in town, mm -hmm. which. I do find that strength in community. Mm -hmm. I also found for me, I was easier to get my stuff done if I just got it done at home. Mm -hmm. And so that, that is part of the routine too. I think getting past whatever is holding you back, if, it, if it's anxiety of joining a group, if it's not having the knowledge of what to do when you're in the gym, mm -hmm. then find a way to, to uh, approach that obstacle. Mm -hmm. And so when I talk about obstacles, for me, nutrition, like mm -hmm. um, I... I a significant obstacle for most of us because there's so much information. You go to YouTube, you go to Facebook, you go to Instagram, you just go on the internet in general, you have a plethora of, of articles and magazines and documents that have, have a variety of uh, perspectives on how a person should eat. Uh, my philosophy is you, you want to align with uh, a, a concept that that works best for the goals that you are pursuing because there's a, a variety of methods but only a, a few principles so what works well for you it uh nutrition is one of the areas i struggle in my, my health journey mm -hmm. and my wife always says the words to me because she's she's the opposite she's uh my wife has great nutrition mm -hmm. discipline mm -hmm. uh, i have great gym discipline mm -hmm. and she always says to me you can't out train a bad diet oh well, yes uh, yes. I, I continue to try to train her or approve her wrong. Mm -hmm. But um, what works for me is it, it has to be convenient. Mm -hmm. It has to be available. Convenient, available. And, and then what is it that's of value for my body that mm -hmm. the performance highest? Mm -hmm. uh, protein intake for me is significant. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I planning ahead, have, my wife does a lot of planning ahead. So mm -hmm. checking in with her about what we have and what mm -hmm. we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And then making those kind of trade-off decisions mm -hmm. like there's times where it should be you know on Why, your plate what are you willing to trade off yeah Initially, on your what are you really uh what are you ready willing and able to trade off at this particular time at this particular season in your life to make yourself one percent better each day it, it, that might be like the, the the key takeaway for somebody who's just jumping into it it doesn't have to be from zero to a hundred you don't mm -hmm. you don't have to go from like i i'm eating poor food from takeout mm -hmm. to, you know, what now I'm eating a chicken, you know, and rice diet. Like, you know, that takeout sounds pretty delicious right now. <laughs> yeah, there's a star, in, Starbucks in my head. In, all in, in moderation. All in moderation. But, but I think that's a, that's, a, that's a great opportunity for you know, me. It, it's a lot about how do you make sure you're getting the, the nutrients your body needs mm -hmm. early in the day, mm -hmm. and then how do you replenish what you use? Mm -hmm. And protein intake is significant, mm -hmm. especially for muscle at, recovery and turnover yeah and I think about the age that I'm at uh, mm -hmm. even, even more important, important. Mm -hmm. you know even more important mm -hmm. I usually we're talking about protein about 0.7 to one gram of protein per pound of body weight for those of you out there who might be curious uh, how much protein you should be eating on a daily basis and it could be different it could vary I would recommend you connect with a nutritionist or someone who has some credentials in the area of nutrition and they'll be able to specify exactly how much you need in terms of 
your dietary fat, your carbohydrates, and uh, your protein as well. A couple more uh, yeah. questions for you, uh, Coach, before we uh, conclude our podcast today. How have you been able to use uh, fitness and athletics to impact the community? I know you're involved, heavily involved with a, a Special Olympics of Nebraska yeah. and Mid-City Madness. Can you, can you talk about your, your roles in those, oh, with those organizations? Yeah, I would love to. And um, I, I think you, the word community stands out to me when you talk about sports so much. Yes. Um, I, I've been very fortunate to play sports throughout my entire life, continue to play sports, not, not as well as I once did, but you know, oh, still like to play. You still, you still the, like my I, I wasn't, pay, I wasn't court. paying for, for, the for, wasn't, for the compliment. I wasn't looking for the compliment on that one. But uh, I, I think, um, gosh, you, you would ask me a question um, you know, in, in preparation for this, and it was about like, what do I learn in sports? And community is everything. Um, I've been able to play sports in high school, you know, a small town kid, so I played all the sports in high school, baseball, track, football, and basketball. Found basketball, took at me to- the college level, played at high level in college. Basketball took me to college, basketball took me overseas. Wow. Uh, basketball takes me into the gym right now, you know, like we can get some shots up. But uh, it, it truly is the community that comes from that. You know, that's what, what sports has brought to me. And now in my life, the phase that I'm in, I'm able to give back through coaching and specifically with Special Olympics is one of the areas I coach. Um, I, it's opening up to leadership opportunities, so I serve on the, the, uh, direct, the board of directors for Special Olympics Nebraska. Can you tell us how you got into working with the Special Olympics? Yeah, I would love to. Um, so you're aware, and for, for everyone uh, following along with us, I have a 13-year-old son uh, with autism spectrum disorder. He's amazing. He's a good kid. Uh, man, He's makes, a phenomenal Makes me tear up a little bit on that one. Yeah. Um, so him, you know, obviously, uh, my they're twins, boy girl twins, mm -hmm. and my daughter's a young athlete as well. And the next WNBA athlete of the year. She's a baller. She's got she she's, she's got good her. skills. She has to figure out how to apply those skills. But she will, yeah. You know, it's, that's her journey, not mine. I have to mm -hmm. tell myself that once in a while. Mm -hmm. That's her journey, not mine. She's got to make that choice. But what I see in her, Coach Sam, she has. She has the discipline, she has the, the drive, she has the talent, and she has people in her corner who want her to do well, her mother and her father. If you have all those components available to you, she, it, she, it's just a matter of time. And she's going through the, you know, yeah. developing a skill, there's uh, confidence uh, and confidence, they work together. And yeah. it's something that you build progressively over time. She's a very confident young lady. Now she's taken that confidence to a whole level. Yeah. A whole different level. And yeah. I, I'm I'm excited to see what type of athlete and even just what type of young lady she becomes in the future. Cause we, you know, as coaches, our job is to build character first and then work on the athlete. And I see she has the best of all world that I know she's going to be successful. I appreciate that. I, um, putting in the work is important. Like no matter if it's uh, you know, at the desk in the job or if it's a, at the, as a family person or if it's an athlete, putting in you got to put in the work. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to touch the bar, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so she does that and uh, I, I think she's surrounded with people who, who are giving her opportunity to do that in a better way. You know, sports is a community for her um, but also sports provides a, a level of self-confidence and she's getting exposed to some, some great female coaches uh, here in the community who, who can pour into her. Coach Eastmo. Oh uh, yeah. She was all American honorable mention yeah. back in 2020. She was, I think she was the number 20 pick yeah. in the WNBA draft that year. Pretty incredible. And then coach Alexis, two year all state at Bellevue uh, West. And yep. then she played at Creighton University, was a machine there. We all know about Coach, Coach Chev. Chevy. Yeah. She was just amazing. So we love DBLP basketball. Huge shout out to yeah. him. But that's the key. Yeah. Hooking hook, hooking our, uh, our our kids up with other positive role models. Role models are everything. And and, and that, that takes me back to Special Olympics. You know, I got I got involved with Special Olympics because I wanted to mm -hmm you know, the opportunity for, for, for my son to participate in sports mm -hmm. at a level that uh, is competitive. It builds a community and it, it helps him with his self-confidence. Mm -hmm. I see him on Facebook. He has like, uh, you know, 
10 medals. What does he compete oh, in? Oh, man. I, like, I know he does basketball. I saw him running. Yeah. he's. Uh, what else is he doing out there? So in Special Olympics, Ryder competes in track and field. Track and field. He does basketball, and, wow. and my wife and I and our friends, the Shannons, have the opportunity to coach the Westside High School That's Unified Team. So pretty, pretty incredible there. Wow. And then he, yeah, swimming is his sport. Mm. Like he swims for uh, the Barracuda Special Olympics team. Wow. And he also swims for the Omaha Swim Club. Wow. And so he's swimming with neurotypical kids in the pool and competing. And he's a. Uh, it, it gives him an area where he can build confidence in himself as a young person. Mm -hmm. And he's part of a community bigger than it, you know, bigger than just his small circle. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Very fortunate. That's, That's amazing. Yeah. Father of the Year award. Go, that's go, not. Sammy. That's so yeah. not true. It yeah. is. I, I appreciate you, Coach. Uh, so, uh, one last question, and yeah. this should be a, a fun one. Okay. Uh, Nikola, uh, how do you pronounce his last no, name? I'll butcher too. With Jokovic. Jokovic. Yeah. yeah. The Joker. Nikola, the Joker. Nikola Jokovic from the uh, Denver Nuggets, yeah. who was uh, drafted eight years ago. Oof. I saw on the news just yesterday. On draft day, there was a Taco Bell <laughs> commercial playing. So I, my, I have two questions for you, Coach. Okay. If an NBA team were to recruit you now, or the NBA were to recruit you whoa, now, whoa, what, whoa. Team, what is... team would you want to play for? And on draft day, what commercial is playing? Oh, man. Uh, I, this is great. This is fun. Uh, I would go play with um, Playoff Jimmy. Uh, Miami oh, Heat. The Miami Heat. Like who? Do, who doesn't want to live in South Miami. Beach? Yeah, South Beach. Uh, right. And I figure Pat Riley is the you know the general manager is probably the only one that could find a spot for me on their roster where mm -hmm. I could actually do something of impact. Maybe yeah. like, we need someone to make one shot from this part of the court. Be like you, you, very, you know, very, like very forty-two right. years old playing I, in the NBA. Uh, I got yeah, him. I, can see you doing I got him beat by a few years. So mm -hmm. yes, uh, it's all good. very positional player. I think maybe the Heat would have a spot mm -hmm. for me. Uh, what commercial are you playing? Uh, man, if the old Gatorade commercial like Be Like Mike would change oh, it to Be Like Sammy. Yeah, Be Like maybe, Sammy. Maybe, maybe that'd be it. That would yeah. be awesome. That would be so awesome. <laughs> Coach Chad, you are a blessing. We are so happy to have you here today. Uh, do you have any last words of encouragement for our viewers before we end the podcast? Um, words of encouragement that I have based on that, we, we talk about a lot of things. Um, mm -hmm. And I think a couple of things we talked about being confidence. Um, we talked about the sense of community and where we're giving back, community, how we show back. up. Mm -hmm. uh, and we talked about doing the work, mm -hmm. um, touching the bar. Mm -hmm. I think for me, the, what I would share with everyone is it, it's this idea like in the world, it's, mm -hmm. it's you can take care of you mm -hmm. and you can give back to others, but you got to take care of yourself first. Mm -hmm. And so how do you practice great self-care? How do you treat your body physically well and your mind mentally well? Mm -hmm. So you can be at your best self mm -hmm. and then give yourself some grace mm. in everyday perfect. That's so important. Give yourself some grace, folks. A wise word yeah. from the awesome Coach Sammy. Uh, until the next time, you know, uh, we're going to take that wisdom, apply it to our lives so we can become the better versions of ourselves. And uh, in uh, the words of uh, Aristotle, we are what we repeatedly do. So excellence is a habit, not an act. Today, give yourself the best effort, give yourself some grace and continue to move forward and pat yourself on the back. We'll see you next time. Coach Chad, Sammy, Sammy. Thanks, Sammy. CC, thank you. Nothing but love for you. Thank you for being here today. Thanks, brother, appreciate I'll it. I'll see you all soon. Flex those <laughs> muscles.